To Alberta Cultural Days. After a long and difficult, arduous time of our world history, COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Norwood Rodriguez and today I'm here for the artist uh, presentation and our subject is Prairie Impressions. Uh, this collaborating uh, collaboration of the, the Society of Northern Alberta print artists and then Alberta printmakers. Uh, we are here to celebrate our Alberta Culture Days 2020 across the province. I would like to uh, introduce first of all myself, then I would like to show my studio a little bit how much I can introduce I'm gonna try and I also want to um, explain my work how what I do why I do and how I do my works uh, then I have two or three according to our timing demos demonstration of what how i practice my artwork i am a turkish born and raised new canadian citizen and calgary based immigrant artist i i and my family my husband and my son we moved to here 2009, August 2009, and this year the 11th year of our living in this land. I would like to call this presentation actually this land. This land is, has been my home, not for two years. It's a, it was a transformation, adaptation and understanding what we are doing and how we are doing. And uh, now I can call here my home. It's uh, basically how we decided and why we decided uh, living in this land is gonna come out also when I explain my artwork. It's because I do work in according to reflecting of my experience and I would like to say another thing also, English is my third language, so I, uh, my native language or my mother language is Turkish. Then I studied German during high school and I started learning and studying English, let's say after post-secondary education. Uh, I was 20, 20s. Uh, I'm saying this thing because my language and the way I'm speaking can tire and can make this presentation a little bit more difficult to call attention, to engage the audience. It's not only the native speaker, also the, the speaking other languages. Because I know that I'm aware of that. We are living on the land. There are many languages other than an only colonial languages uh, English and French this land in this land multi 
lingualism I think is the one of the very interesting thing and very important thing for me which reflects multi-centered culture and country which also reflects and which allows us talking about the multiplicity and also myself who is belong to the communities of the multiculturalism so I am a multidisciplinary artist my education first training post-secondary bachelor degree is the bachelor of fine art is ceramic specialization and ceramic and glass art and design and technologies I graduated and I finished my university 1999 and I moved to abroad living and studying English and pursuing master degree things they changed when I moved to 2000 to other uh, countries I went to first of all San Francisco studying there because one of my professors uh, friend helped me to go there and study and I I got involved there learning English set in a family and mm, more uh, studying multidisciplinary uh, studies multi multimedia studies not multidisciplinary and getting involved uh, and doing all these things uh, September 11 happened 2001 and then uh, things they have changed studying and trying to get in student visas uh, extending our life was extending to stay our life was there difficult so we my my partner and I we decided to move uh, to Europe first we lived three years in Istanbul then after that we tried to two years in Istanbul and after that two years in his, his country in Spain in Madrid three years Madrid and south of Spain Andalusia so that made me even more multilingual person then those times my son joined to our life Adrian came to and joined to our life and with him multilingualism multilingualism or multi multilingualism I think is the correct thing became center of my word actually learning English setting in relationship with my family first main language became home language became English and then raising up a child with my own native language also English Turkish then living in Spain English Turkish and Spanish this multilingualism made me think and uh, practice and reflect how we learn and how much language shapes and form language and learning languages shapes and forms us as a diasporic individuals and also the definitely immigrant bodies mm. as I said in English uh, I get stuck sometimes uh, I would like to uh, continue with uh, my uh, coming to Canada and then moving to uh, have to continue my studies master degree when we moved here 2009 uh, definitely I I and my family my partner we were in a uh, we weren't sure if we were going to stay here how it was going to happen everything we didn't know how was the process so we focused on the process on 
have to stay here and then we got our permanent residency 2012. While we are, uh, I think it was October 15, 2012. While we are in this uh, settlement, we figure out that it was an arduous processes and how to deal with everything. So I just focused on and started doing all our documentation and preparation are for permanent residency, staying in this land and becoming an immigrant more than newcomers and temporary residents. It took a very long and I decided in that moment to focus on to observe and to get involved how people deal with these processes as a newcomer and also how people who live in on this land and then welcoming or getting understanding these newcomers, old settlers and also the indigenous people and their culture how everything was actually reflecting us. So while I was doing this, uh, focusing on in my art and my own life, the, trying to get involved working in the newcomer center as a volunteer and calling every other day or a, once a week, not exaggerate, every other day, uh, immigration office, Hey, what I'm gonna do this? How I'm gonna do this? If we we have some obstacles or struggles about our work change processes of uh, applying provincial nominee and then permanent residency program, federal government level applications, so all these things and understanding terminology was massively tiring and thinking about them, I said. I'm going to take this to my art also. I would like to celebrate this knowledge and share and engage people. 2015, I entered the program before uh, University of Calgary's uh, graduate studies program at Art Department, Faculty of Art. Before I started uh, thinking the master degree, I decided to enhance and to develop my um, portfolio and uh, how should I start? Then I started taking some courses as an open studies student and I started learning what is Canadian art, what is Canadian contemporary art, what is uh, actually that I can also practice and it can I can reflect very fastly uh, other than a ceramic because practicing ceramic and then working with clay was a difficult uh, medium medium as uh, living as a tenant so a studio is a very important thing in our um, practices so I started thinking about that while I was studying. One of my professor, Catherine Ilitalo, who has become also my mentor and lifelong friend, she recommended me, to, uh, how about printmaking? Would you like to get involved in printmaking? We have a very good printmaking studios and later you can develop it and extend it in your work also. Then I said, can I do that? Oh yeah, there are introduction level courses. Then I registered to course, Kim Hoon at the University of Calgary, printmaking professor. Our, uh, she was the, our first professor, my first, first professor in our classroom in printmaking. So, I mentioned to her that my aim and I'm here to develop and extend my uh, skills and some different techniques. Maybe even in the future I can combine with other uh, medium because I'd like to study and learn uh, actually mainly 
have to talk true art, social and political issues and then have to advance uh, making art in the social and political context became right now my main uh, aim through my artworks. So I started making art and I would like to a little bit show around uh, my work but I would like to show first of all my one of my work that is made with porcelain and then printmaking. Why I would like to show this work to a little bit make fun of this presentation. This is a porcelain piece and this each layer is with the porcelain brush, slip, liquid clay, porcelain clay, uh, clay body and then stack on carefully then I fired it in the very high temperature which is con 6 I think more than 1200 Celsius then after firing this I printed this uh, writing is printed from the decal and there's a special decal firing schedule also we set it there, it comes. This is 2018, I made it. It's a, with the, our wonderful place at Medalta, which is in Medicine Hat. And then there is a, there is a, one of the very, uh, established and well-known and wonderful place to make ceramic uh, artisan residency in clay or not only clay but it is at the heritage uh, site uh, Medalta industrial how industrial and this industry turns to a cultural environment industry environment turns to a cultural environment their view experience so I made it there. So Medalta became a kind of a, my turning point. Before later, I'm going to come back to Medalta. But right now, uh, in this presentation, I would like to show a little bit my studio. I would like to travel you around the studio. Sorry for this. So, this side of my studio is clay. And uh, I have shelves. I make mold making. I do pottery. And I also uh, hand buildings. Uh, the ceramic forms and this is my uh, after the clay part my studio and that part is mix of the uh, printmaking and today we are gonna work a little bit here and this is my wall of documenting this is my library that uh, it's just some part and and I would like to show also this work. I do also, I'm a print, a paper maker also. I make paper. And then with the paper, I make also paper and sculpture molding and casting. I do paper, handmade paper uh, mold making too. And I would like to introduce you to this, my family clay family actually I wanted to I kept them on the closet but today I wanted to show uh, us here this each cup almost each cup some of my friends they put, give me two cups but each container is almost representing one person I would like to see all of them here 
Hello, and then they know themselves. Melanie, Chloe, Grace, Astrid, Chris, Caro, Aaron. Oh, I don't have Nurikos here, but Rob. Yeah. And these are my things. I would like to show us a few work that recently I really focused on. On the, this is my uh, wall I could keep. I practice text on my work. As you can see, those photographs and those, those artworks are mine also. Whatever you see is almost mine, except the uh, Cubs family members. I would like to ha introduce you my first uh, kind of demo or uh, description. Uh, this kind of porcelain tile, this is like a paper. I wanted to make it like tablet style or tile that represents the uh, words. So for this uh, kind of making it, I prepared one of the other tile uh, mold. So I make first of all the positive one, I prepare it with the clay, I insert the letters inside so that that incised letters, I remove the letters, then it becomes this way, the soft clay, then I pour over it the plaster and it becomes this negative mold. And for this, uh, for this um, kind of introduction, I would like to turn this way and let's see yes this is better i have clay here where is my clay my clay is here i'm gonna mix it and i'm gonna pour it inside of the tile so it's um, this clay is the I get from is a bag and powder uh, uh, body of clay and then there is a recipe of it how much water you have to put how much uh, uh, clay you have to and then mix it so then it becomes liquid clay which we call it slip so I prepare my own clay first of all and then mold of course when you are making the um, form positive form and uh, you have to use the soft clay so then we are gonna pour Even though I prepared everything, you see in the studio, everything is very alive and moving and active. So studio cleaning is very important though. So I'm going to pour inside of the tile. I don't want to overload it because I want to have a thin layer so that becomes so they have been very dry these tiles it's been a long time they haven't been used so it holds the clay wet clay so fast and 
and also I cannot work with the apron so I use all my t-shirts and shirts and pants studio clothing I organize because I tried for many years working with apron but I couldn't do that so you see the clay is gonna get shaped and settle down and once it's dry, we're gonna remove it. The other work I would like to show or description of the work is the, how we are gonna we can make a slab with the slip uh, clay. For that, I use some different kind of wood sticks, and then which gives the thickness of the clay and also to make it slap from the hard uh, back clay or to make a, a slip so first of all I work with the, I need to explain to you I work over the plaster surfaces so those surfaces they hold so fast the uh, clay so what I do I prepare kind of a borders and those borders allows me to make a, a slip slap for these borders I need to find kind of a yes those are all the same thickness what I'm gonna do right now I want to see also this Those are why I'm showing it. I'm they are kind of my papers. This is kind of a thick paper is gonna be, but once once it dries out. looking at the camera so I don't know how much you can see how you see me how informative visually that's why I'm looking at the camera and it's a very difficult thing to do everything yourself but artists have to do many things these days themselves especially after the pandemic we have to be a producer we have to be a designer we have to be a creator I mean, I have contact with creators, though it's like I'm not that much be negative. It's not negativity. It really pushes us. It really pushed us this time of the in our life. Actually, this experience pandemic pushed us very different avenues, different places to be. But I think we are learning how to do many things, even though it's difficult. Yeah. So if it's excessive, I'm gonna move it a little bit out of the border, so then this shouldn't be excessive. It can go to the plaster or the plaster, but so it's gonna get dry. Why I prepared this one? Because if it dries, whenever it dries, we are going to remove it. And it's a slab, it's like my paper, and we are going to work over uh, the surface of this clay tablet or paper. We are going to do soxaprene or some other experiences we are going to In this uh, part of our Presentation. I would like to show one sculptural experience. First of all, I use uh, different kind of materials that I would like to mind. As uh, I use to cast my body flax wax. And actually, I would like to show that 
But I was doing the assistantship, teaching assistantship. Uh, Ron Kostuniak showed me that this flax wax is very good to use the, to cast body. You heat, it melts, and it, this is reusable. It's expensive, but it's kind of a uh, very efficient material. So I melt it and slowly I pour on my body. You need to be sensitive to your body, don't try to burn. And then I cast my arms or my body or um, uh, you know some other difficult objects that you can cast and you can produce a mold and model making. After that I make the positive one. Again it's like the plaster, I couldn't find that piece. <coughs> Then I add that positive form, it's, uh, I then becomes this kind of mold. What I would like to do here, I would like to, this one is the, also the uh, dec decal, but here I would like to practice how I write on my work, how I can do that. So I found this uh, types press hand press types in San Francisco when I was living there as a student at the garage sale I think it was one buck bucks yeah well, one 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 dollar just is uh, and I kept it for many years I don't know why moving even though I was moving here I brought it and I use it all my project right now we're gonna use this hand press and I have this mold, sculptural, and we have on one slab with the porcelain material. I use many different bodies of clay. I use uh, plain cement clay bodies. Most of all, I, since I moved here, and I don't use others, and I really enjoy because of all these materials are locally. Uh, not all the materials, raw materials are locally, but it is a local clay. So uh, I focus on becoming local and what is the, about this land, where they are coming from. And placement is also is a, uh, established by very well-known name, person, and who is from this land, who had spent with his steps on the prairies, looking for clay, looking for his inspiration, Lick Luklindo. I wanted to mention his name also because each time whenever I use clays or I try to get him all different body of clays, <coughs> I feel very appreciated that I don't have to go and look for other things and other places. So we are very lucky. For this work, we need clay we need some sticks to make a slab to, uh, I'm gonna make try to make a, a f not too fine but fine enough uh, clay slab and then surface I use wood or kind of this kind of non sticky <coughs> surfaces and without any texture and my mold is here cutter I get always my sponge and my water also here my knife we don't need that much first of all I would like to clean nicely the surface of the so maybe it's got a little bit reddish because it has some residues but I think it's gonna be okay please we can clean it and also I have this uh, hand press leathers we don't need that much but we need enough so I cut the clay maybe it's better to make one piece yeah I'm going to make a piece not the three pieces yeah so It's quite right here. Yeah. 
So you have to estimate how much is gonna be your clay so then you can organize the clay. And then I use also the roller to, to make a slab of our clay. Make it slab. You remove also the any possible air because when all this dries, we have to fire them, so it shouldn't carry any air between the wall, inside the wall, not between inside the wall of the form, because while it gets fired, it can explode or crack. So, yeah. when the surface doesn't have, yeah, I have to. Oh, I should, I should have one more. Next time, I'm gonna one more. surface to use my prints to make my images to reflect to, to show to talk about everything almost but I use paper also and I make also paper clay I mix the paper also with my clay body Orders. When you press it, it comes. The lines. You can do pinching by pinching also. You can build the ball, but I try to do this way. It's easier because you have even surface now. Very good at uh, making always even surface, but I don't mind to have uneven surfaces. Also, that imperfectionism also is kind of nature of the being. I used to think that it has to be perfect, and I used to it used to give me a lot of fear not to start, not to do it. But now I'm learning that things they come in the moment. That's my creativity as well. Taking risk, becoming a better person, becoming a learning person, not standing up all the time. I know this. It's it makes you. I I heard me from many teachers also that while I'm making, I make, I learn. While I teach, I learn, which which is true so if you want to have very perfect surface you can use some other tools rubber tools or sponge yep or wood tools I give a little bit to get press to get this surface detail because with this material with the flax wax you really get all the detail of your skin it's a, and I love plaster also that way it allows you to get the texture of 
the details, especially when you, I cast skin, my own body. Our work after it dries out here, our clay, we can remove it. But still, this has to get a little bit more leather hard. Leather hard, and then we can type on it with our stamps. While this one is resting here, I would like to take us clay to slap see it as you can see it's little hard it got dried out this work I'm not gonna wait that long I'm going to remove this one and I prepare something with the plastic bag inside I put some cloth some garment I'm going to remove it, as you see, and so with this way, what we can write today is, let's write it down, this land, here, or Actually, I want to write down there, start something. I want to share something. This is the description of the, for the cultural diverse artists, or let's say visible minorities. I was wondering what does it mean visible minorities? So <clears throat> I would like to read it. Culturally diverse artist, when I see this, who is culturally diverse artist? Cultural diverse communities are defined as racialized groups that correspond, correspond to visible minorities. Under the Federal Employment Equity Act, there are individuals of African, Asian, Latin American, Middle Eastern or mixed ancestral heritage that includes at least one of these groups. So I would like to write here, culturally diverse artist or a person, a visible minority, culturally diverse artist. Cal it's going to fix there, I think so. Culture. Knowledge. This is one work. As you can see, this is with the decal. Decal. It is bulky. This is with the hand press letters. Our slab, sleepy casted slab, is ready right now, and I'm going to take it here. This is our speedball <clears throat> six of green set, small set, and I'm going to show how we are doing this. And I need to dry now. And we set our clay there under the screen.
Too soft, it didn't come. <laughs> yes, baby, let's go. It comes, it's gonna be nice. Maybe I did enough because I haven't used this material for a long time. This needs more. Do you miss dating so much? paper so what I would like to do before it gets dry I want to wait a little bit dry out and I want to roll make a roll like this so it's gonna be our English alphabet this is technique I would like to try right now is all monotype and what I would like to do I would like to do a very experimental uh, way of painting the only thing is that we have to be careful here is we need brushes we need some other glaze uh, other glaze paintings and we also need kind of mixer everything is here we need to register our paper here I'm trying to do that in on a real paper and uh, it's kind of an experimental this kind of materials are so I'm just leaving what I would like to do all the way, I'm going to leave this pay and mark and I'm going to rush now. Here is the tricky part is what you want to see on the screen, on the, on the paper, it has to be the first applied, for example. I would like to try this one. This is gonna come. It's kind of red. Should I 
it has to be done this way mostly still mixing with clay but right now I'm using with tender glaze because with the clay I didn't have ready but now I have a clay body black one prepare this body of clay myself with a non cobalt co cobalt uh, black pigment and then clay when we fire it it is nice also and we can do it on the paper also we want a little bit mix also but some parts Printing, but let's clean it around. Another very clean for some with paper, but we have. I still want to keep this wall snow one also. It just can't scrap itself in monoprint. And I'm gonna fire it with a tile. Maybe I can work a little bit more later when it dries. Let's continue with our tile, another one. From here, a tablet or our slab. I would like to show you the result. And First of all, we clean the borders. Well, separate it so it can be separated easily. Probably I'm going to need to take more, but that's okay. Ceramic is a very demanding, like in our but it, uh, it requires some chemistry, it requires some skill. You have to be a neat and clean person, especially when you want to have a very clean and result. Separate 
completed. Border lines. Borders are very important, you know. This style especially is very important for me. I learned this word here while I was leaving. People told me, oh, you are a hyphen person, are you? And I said, what do you mean hyphen? And hyphen... I don't think I'm a hyphen person, I don't know, I don't know what you are. And I figured out, yes, I found a plexiglass here. My son is actually is a hyphen. His father is Spanish, mother is Turkish, and, he had, and now he doesn't have Canadian citizenship. He's not a Canadian citizen, but he's hyphenated. So, Hyphenated person. It is hyphenated. So I'm gonna try to separate. Yes. Separate it. This is the hyphenated. The word that describes. My son, he has an hyphenated identity. Just let's finish this one. And I would like to make a roll of these things because earlier books they used to be still wet, so we have to be careful because later it's not going to be. Um, easy to move it to move it to make a roll up before it gets because you see it's already cracking before it gets I want to turn and turn yeah it's already falling apart some parts but I think it's gonna be okay yeah I go earlier books want to make it yeah. so this is my it's gonna be porcelain hello now I would like to conclude something uh, some way or I don't know how to conclude but when this opportunity came to me I just had a huge fear in my on my chest and I said how I'm gonna do this but at the same time I wanted to jump on it because this is gonna be very good that it's gonna make me to it's gonna make me experience in um, belonging and being in this land have been is this land uh, the fear of using uh, language English is always every time each time whenever I have to be public it's 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 there and it just doesn't go and I know that it normally regularly I can speak and experience it easier way and prairies impressions this uh, I wanted to talk about that how I arrived here how I did everything and how everything is becoming and how I am becoming as an artist, I wanted to reflect this uh, experience, and this is a big opportunity again. I would like to thank to Snap and AP Alberta Printmaking also. So I wanted to give this feeling that whoever I, I'm trying to give this feeling or reflect the feeling displace and replace people who decide to leave or not to decide and I, it's just had to be 
another culture, another language, another countries and with the, another language uh, to survive their life, Langu using languages as a vehicle to run their life. And uh, for this experience, I would like to conclude with the work of example. This is uh, behind of me, this work is the, it's a large lino cut print. And I made this one when I was at the artist in residence last year, 2019, uh, June and July at the AU Arts. And uh, this uh, summer artist residency program was very good for me and I developed a uh, Kind of, I, I chose some reading and then I wanted to develop uh, other work, but I want to make more and more large scale of the writings, bringing out, and it was an opportunity for me to find the lino vinyl there at the UR's bookstore. I found this uh, narrative, I was looking, then I figured out actually my stories they have lots of narratives so i wanted to reflect the, all these narratives that when you try to go other places where do you come how do you come where do you go with whom you are with sometimes we don't think but uh, we the only thing i know that people try to find a home, home where they can live, they can survive, they can continue their life. Of course, I moved to this land voluntarily, I immigrated as an immigrant. Uh, I've been living here since 2009. And I know that many people who had to move on just uh, their bodies, they were unwanted and uh, without their decision. So making a home, trying to live here and becoming a Canadian citizen or becoming a kind of a new person with the new identity and uh, experiencing borders, experiencing new definitions, new politics, and uh, meeting with many individual diasporic individuals. It's uh, it's uh, there are many stories it's a it's a very long and broad stories but it has two way of the story and we are not only i'm not trying to only talk about my own story i'm also trying to talk about the land where i decide to live it has its own story and stories and narratives i hope you enjoy this uh, talk and you can reach me my work you can reach me also here instagram through instagram norville rodriguez and thank you for listening happy cultural alberta cultural days i hope we are going to be much more healthier for next year Bye.